Hey, it's Joseph here. I've got a PC over here that is currently running. It is not really connected to anything besides the power. It is a living room slash HTPC. And it gets that purpose because it is very small, but gets the job done and it is quite simplistic type of build, yet quite well budgeted. The overall build comes around 500 or 450 if you shave some costs and find some sales here and there. And this is the end result. So let's hear the message from our sponsor and also the build montage. And today's video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. I actually enjoy building and tinkering with the custom computers that are exactly tailored for my needs. However, all of these builds need one thing in common, an OS or the operating system specifically in my case, Windows. Thanks to our sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a copy of OEM activation key that actually works for Windows 10 Pro. Just be sure to use the links in the description for the type of Windows that you would like to use. And use a secure payment method such as PayPal with the promotion code JK25 for an additional 25% off from a ready cheap cost. And I have paid total of $16.25 to get the key for my new computer build. Once you have made the purchase, you can simply view the code and log that into the activation section of Windows. You can simply hit next and the Windows will check the code via internet and your Windows is activated. And because this is a legal copy of Windows 10, upgrades to Windows 11 is free and available. Be sure to use the links in the description to get discounted Windows keys from VIP SCD Key and use the promotion code JK25.
And when that is all put together, it looks like this. So let me go ahead and open it up so I can show you the insides. So after the three screws, I should be able to get inside. Just slide the top panel out. It is quite simple. Let me also remove this bracket. And I actually think it's a good idea to leave this bracket installed because the overall sturdiness of the frame increases with it. But you can certainly remove it if you feel that this somehow impedes the airflow. If you have much slimmer CPU cooler, then you can also install 120 mil fan on here and have a bit more airflow into the case. But I think in this case, because the CPU is not particularly something powerful, therefore it is not gonna need as much cooling. And here is a box for the motherboard that I had used. It is a Gigabyte Aerus B450 Pro Wi-Fi. It is a mini ITX motherboard. Not necessarily very new, so you can certainly get a secondhand board off of eBay for around 100 bucks. So it was quite cheaply available, yet it does have Wi-Fi. So let me actually connect the antennas. So instead of using the Wi-Fi antennas that often gets included in the box, I like using these third-party ones that are kind of short and nicely attached to the back of the board like this so that I don't have to worry about any wires that are dangling so it is much easier to carry things around if needed and for this motherboard I had to go with AMD CPU obviously and in this case the CPU is 2200 G so it does have graphics inside of the CPU I don't need a separate graphics card if I really want one I can include a very short and slim one, but at this point for the living room PC type of purposes, you don't really need a external graphics card. Most of the small games and video streamings and such don't really require one. Therefore, I'm just gonna rely on this. And then the storage choice was this one over here. It's Sabrent Rocket NVMe PCIe M.2 2280 SSD. And it is 512 gigabytes model and you can kind of see it over there and I really like it because it doesn't require any of the wire connection NVMe is just built into the board so you just slot that in put the heatsink on top and that is it in terms of the connection it is definitely not PCIe Gen 4 although the board and the CPU doesn't support it why waste money there and it is cheaply available as well and in terms of the memory I've got this one here it is Corsair Vengeance LPX I just use this all the time and I really like the look of it too it is DDR4 2x8 kit and it is 16 gigabyte total and it is 3200 megahertz and it should be plenty for this build purpose I think you could go with a gigabyte stick so if you actually have those lying around you can certainly use it for this kind of build frankly 16 would be an overkill for this build of a level but it is also cheaply available so why not fit one here and perhaps have a bit more longevity and whilst the motherboard was provided to me although I saw the listing on eBay going for about a hundred dollars I bought the CPU myself off of eBay there's a lot of secondhand CPUs that are still great and you can certainly use them for budget builds like this and save a lot of buck in that way so about a hundred for the CPU and then hundred for the motherboard and for the storage it is going about seventy dollars US you can get it a bit cheaper if you want to go for lesser of a storage or just this specific one on sale and I have paid $78 for the memory kit you can go a little less than that if you aim for the 8 gigabyte kit but for the amount of money I felt that was just right and again just the overall build theme here is budget build but good enough for your living room or HTPC setup and continuing the theme the power supply that's been included right here it is one from Silverstone it is SX 300 watt series and it is 80 plus bronze and it does include this tiny little SFX power supply that sits right here it is not modular therefore I was able to tuck in all the cables in here I have not used any cable ties and I still was able to just route things and then tuck cables wherever it is 
not necessary and it just fits right in. And the name of this case is ML05 from Silverstone and I really like their compact cases because they're quite economically available as well as just having all of these functions available. You can install more fans over here if the heat dissipation is ever a concern or a problem for you. And on this tiny little cage here, you can install up to four different 2.5 inch drives and you can kind of struggle through cable managing all of that. But I wasn't really up for it. Therefore, I went with the MVME with the Sabrent drive. So this build I put together within about an hour or so. Streamlined build and I didn't really catch any snags. So thank you Silverstone for showcasing another PC case with me along with the included power supply. And thank you Sabrent for providing me with the storage. And before I let you go, I wanted to show you this too. This is more like an audio deck type of form factor where it is kind of low but kind of long. But this one is more kind of boxy rectangular form. And this is another PC case from Silverstone that I am currently using in my living room. And it is called SG13. And I really have been loving the overall form factor. And if you want, you can install regular graphics card in here given that it is not too big of a unit. And they're both economically available and you can fit about the equal amount of parts in here. This one takes a little bit more of a graphics card than this one, but some of the living room configuration that you have, the furniture may not fit a unit like this, then you want to go with this unit here. And technically, this is a smaller size than this one. So I just wanted to kind of showcase that to you. So for those of you who want small form factor PCs in a tiny little budget cases and also want one for living room HTPC purposes, then you can certainly look at these cases. If you have liked this content, please like and consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching these type of video. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.